if we are on a um, on a ledge, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> if we have to rely upon the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and the God within, mm -hmm. is the question one of altering where the seismographic findings suggest the next earthquake is going to occur? Is it just prayer? Is it the luck of the draw? Chased by compassion? What's our role as not enlightened beings, but compassionate people with respect to the next earthquake? Well, first of all, the enlightened master and the compassionate being is the same thing. That's all that an enlightened master is, is someone who has completely actualized their potential for compassion. I know, from a theological perspective, the answer to your question as it relates to everything. And that's that we evolve now and transform into the people that we are capable of being. A lot of us are pretty darn good. Yeah. But we are being shown by history right now, good's not good enough. And when Roosevelt said to his generation, we have a rendezvous with destiny, we didn't think we had a rendezvous with destiny. We thought, largely because of the sacrifices and efforts of other generations, that for our lifetime, you know, we could pretty much cruise. And things have descended. Things that we thought would not descend or would not descend this low in a way that is deeply, deeply dis disturbing, particularly for those of us who do feel that America is the last best hope of mankind. But from A Course in Miracles perspective, it says, God has the answer to every problem the moment the problem occurs. Also, in Alcoholics Anonymous, <clears throat> they say, every problem comes bearing its own solution. And the Native American Indians talk about the fact that if there's a poison in the forest, the antidote to the forest is within a few feet away. So I think it's time for each and every one of us to look and to see the gap between who we are, how we're manifesting, like most of us, if we're honest with ourselves, on a scale of 1 to 10, like on a scale of 1 to 10, Elliot, yep. in terms of 10 being the fullest possible manifestation of your creative potential this lifetime, Okay. how are you doing? Six and a half. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's true for a lot of us. <clears throat> we're hovering 6, 7. Yeah. And that's the point of this moment on the planet. We got three digits, and it's time. Because we're good, and the planet is in total peril. Yes. Okay? Good's clearly not good enough. Yep. Now, as we rise to higher and higher frequencies, and that's, that's the only meaningful prayer right now. Dear God, whatever is keeping me from being everything I can possibly be this lifetime, whatever it is within me, that's keeping me from rising to the highest level of possible vibration at which I would attract the highest level of vibratory synergy with other people in order to do the most and have the maximal growth for ourselves and others within a very short period of time, thank you. Whatever blocks remain to my making it to 10, I am so willing to go through whatever that spiritual surgery is to become that person. And that's no different than what we were taught when we were children about any species that <clears throat> gets to a point where its behavior makes it no longer well adapted for the survival of that species. We are not well adapted for the survival of our species. We fight too much, and we are in the midst of systematically destroying our own habitat. So what happens when you've got that level of unsustainable behavior? Either the species goes extinct, or a mutation occurs. And then, even though the mutation does not represent the majority of the species, the descendants of the mutations will forge their own line of development for the species. 
That's what a Jesus is. That's what a Buddha is. That's what a Moses is. They are mutations spiritually. But more and more people see the totally enlightened ones now, the compassionate ones, and we want to be of that. And that's, that's really the only question on the planet. Will you go this way or are you, you're going to go that way? We are going to become a more loving species, one way or the other. It's either going to happen because we wise up, and we wise up quickly, and enough of us get serious about this love thing real quick because there is no more time. Yep. Or we will manifest <clears throat> whatever horror, and there might be five people left at the end of it all, but they will look at each other and go, let's do it differently this time. Yeah. Now, I want to tell you something I read just last night which blew my mind. What? Are you familiar with the Urantia book? Of course I am. Read the last page of the Urantia book. Well, you were talking about the Urantia book when I saw you last Tuesday, um, and, and, and you offered a couple of quotes from it, which were just spot on. Well, and, I read last night the, the last page of the book. Okay, it was, you know, 987 pages. Yeah, so not that I've read the whole I'm, thing, I'm, I'm but trying, I'm reading the last section right now. Tell me, uh, just remind <coughs> me, because I did read Well, the last section is The Life and Teachings of Jesus. Yes. But there's something on the last page, the last two or three paragraphs, that I found absolutely mind-blowing. Yes. It's so amazing. It talks about, in very, very much aligned with the Course in Miracles, when you do something out of love, when it's loving, holy, beautiful, and true, it's an eternal creation. So the Course, so in the, on the last page of the Ranch book, there's some line, I forget the exact phrase, but basically, if humanity decides not to survive, mm -hmm. still have no fear. Because in the mind of the Father, all the love, all the beauty, all the holiness will still be there. Which is much like in the Course in Miracles when it, where it says that if you basically, the message is, if you deflect a loving possibility, like if love is offered to you in a relationship or an opportunity, you turn it down because of whatever personality issue, the Course in Miracles says it will be held in trust for you by the Holy Spirit until you are ready to receive it. So I thought it was amazing. I, I don't know the exact words, but <clears throat> what I thought was so amazing was it made clear it's not guaranteed that we will survive. But even if we don't, the eternal creations will survive the destruction of... Now, I think hope is a moral imperative. Yes. And I have that hope. But just as I think maturing to the realization that you don't have forever in this lifetime... I think it's important for us to get that. Do you, do you really want to see? Do you really want to see all that? Do you, want, you really want that suffering to happen here, guys? Do you really want to lose all the great architecture and all the great music and all the great literature and all the great scientific advances, all the works of genius and brilliance that have ever occurred? Do you, you really want to let that go? Do you really want to let go this incredible context in which people fall in love and make love and have babies and give birth and play with children playing and flowers blossoming. You really you think about this again. You really want to let this go? Because that's what we're talking about here. And there is no guarantee of, oh, well, that won't happen. When you have something like, I can't remember how many thousands of nukes we have in this country, plus I think it's we have seven... Um, there's a few thousand in reserve, and then there are a few thousand actively, like, ready to go. In the Nevada desert, I think. I know. I know. So if you're not grieving, you're not looking. But if you're not simultaneously rejoicing, you're not in the know, spiritually. I got an email from a friend yesterday. This man was so depressed, and he went on and on about how he'd broken down crying, and all that we've worked at and all that different people throughout history have worked at and that it's come to this and it wasn't that I disagreed with anything he was saying in terms of the material factors but I just wrote back to my friend and I said this guy really needs to come to my lectures you know he really needs he really needs a sense that somebody said to me they put it the other day they said um, in the end it's all good and if it's not all good it's not the end yet Good one, isn't it? That's a good one. Uh huh. And you have, there is ample 
historical evidence and mythological lore to argue for the fact that God has the final say. You know, whether it's uh, the crucifixion followed by the resurrection, <clears throat> the slavery of the, slavery of the Israelites followed by their deliverance to the promised land. Um, Hitler was, and then Hitler was defeated. Um, there has never been a monster along the line of Hitler who was not ultimately defeated. <laughs>